Hi, my name is Kit Leung, and I am a San Bernardino County Master Gardener volunteer. Thank you for taking the time to watch our video today. In the spirit of Halloween, we're going to be playing a game and taking a look at various creepy crawly critters found in our home gardens. Lastly, I'd like to thank the San Bernardino County Museum for allowing us to partner with them for their annual Science Spectacular event. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about the Master Gardener Organization. The, U the UCCE Master Gardeners, UCCE standing for University of California Cooperative Extension, the Master Gardeners are trained volunteers who provide unbiased information to the public on various gardening -related, top related topics. Areas of expertise include drought resistant sustainable landscapes and food production in home, community and school gardens. Our Master Gardeners reach over 30,000 residents annually. And a little bit more about me. Um, again, my name is Kit Leung. I've been a master gardener since uh, 2019, and I've been gardening for about 10 years. I love science, and I really enjoy the science of gardening, and that's how I got into gardening and eventually became a master gardener. I am passionate about growing and harvesting my own food, and most, and most importantly, I love teaching others about gardening. What I love about gardening, I enjoy vegetable gardening, vermicomposting, which is composting with worms, all things irrigation, so building it, designing it, repairing irrigation, it re I really enjoy that. Uh, I, I enjoy uh, practicing sustainability and gardening with California native plants. As I shared earlier, since it's getting close to Halloween, I wanted to share some of my favorite and not so favorite creepy crawly garden critters with you. So we're gonna play a game. The game is called Pals or Pets. Have you played it? Before we do that, let's define what a pal and a pest are. These definitions are for the purposes of this game. And I know the pal or pest label can be subjective. It could be based on opinion. I'm going to be sharing the most common label for each of the critters we're going to talk about based on my own training and my own experience. So a pest, pests are considered those critters, those animals, insects that are not desirable in the home garden because they cause harm, they do damage to our plants or they damage our gardens. Pals, on the other hand, are critters that don't cause harm, they don't cause damage, and we generally don't mind them being around. So another way to think about it is pests are the garden bad guys and pals are the garden good guys. So are you ready? So on the honor system, keep track of the number you get right. Okay, here we go. All right, the first the first critter are the first critters are worms. So earthworms, redworms. What do you think, pal or pest? If you said pals, I would agree with you. You're correct. So earthworms and you know redworms or worms in general that you find in the soil, they're very beneficial for our soil and for our plants. So as they dig, they make little pockets in the soil that allows the roots of the plant to get to get air. And secondarily, as they consume decaying matter, as they consume rotting, rotting things in the soil, uh, they excrete uh, what's called castings, which is another word for worm poop. And that worm poop is very nutritious. It, it really provides a lot of the nutrition for plants to grow healthy and strong. Okay, next critter, aphids. So aphids are these little yellow insects on this narrow leaf milkweed. And what they're doing is they're sucking sap from that plant. So knowing that, what do you think aphids are? Pal or pest? If you had said pests, I would agree. So aphids, as they suck that sap from, the, from, the, from a plant, what happens is that plant gets weakened. They're, the plant itself is no longer getting the nutrients that it once had because they're losing it to these aphids. And, it, and as a result of that, of that consumption of the sap, the aphids actually produce something called honeydew. And that honeydew is actually something that, that, is, um, that attracts ants. And what's actually happened is that ants have developed over time to learn how to farm aphids. So they end up taking care of their eggs, protecting the aphids. And they, what they do is they, um, they provide that protection so that in exchange for the, the protection and for the farming of the aphids, the aphids provide that, that food source, that, that sugary sap for the ants to eat. So in some ways you can consider ants 
as aphid farmers. Okay, let's move on to the next critter, ladybugs, or otherwise known as lady beetles. Pal or pest? If you said pal, you are correct. So lady, ladybugs, you've, many of you have probably have experienced a ladybug landing on the tip of your nose, landing on your shirt or whatever. And um, generally, ladybugs don't, uh, don't do much harm or damage in the garden. So they're considered, uh, benefit, they're, and they're considered beneficial insects because one of the ladybugs' prime food sources are aphids. So they actually help to control the aphid population in, in some home gardens. So we would call them a pal. Okay, so this one we've already given you a little, little bit of a hint. So take a look at this picture and we're looking at ants, okay? Look at those little green insects there and look at what the ants are doing. What do you think? Pal or pest? Ants are pests. So because they are known for taking care of aphids, farming aphids and, and, and really protecting aphids, uh, we consider them a pest, um, not only in the home garden, but also, you know, you might have experienced it in the home as well when you leave out um, food and overnight and they end up, you know, swarming that food. Uh, but they're a pest in the garden because uh, they protect aphids and some aphids actually carry viruses and diseases that um, end up being very detrimental to some of our, our, uh, uh, our fruit crops and, and other plants. And so uh, we would consider ants a pest. Next critter, hummingbirds. Pal or pest? They're a pal. So we've seen the, the, the we've seen hummingbirds out out in the wild. They are fascinating to to watch hover around. They are they're beautiful to look at, and they're great pollinators in the garden. So this one here is is looking for nectar and and drinking nectar from the flowers. And as they do that, they they help pollinate the flowers as well. Okay, our next critter is tomato hornworm. Pal or pest? Tomato hornworm is a pest. So if you look on the, in the, on the left, uh, you'll see that in the upper left there, you'll see a healthy tomato plant. You've got nice leafy, bushy tomato plant with full leaves. And then if you go down to the bottom left, you start seeing these little stems without leaves on the end of, ends of them. You see several of them here where my pointer is. And if you compare them, the bottom one looks much less full. And it's, it's as a result of hornworms having visited this, this tomato plant down below. And if given enough time, hornworms can actually defoliate or eat all the leaves, leaves off of a tomato plant. And without leaves, the plants aren't able to generate their own food and you're not really gonna have a healthy tomato plant. So uh, in addition to this evidence here of eaten leaves and these, these stems um, that look like they've been cut off, other evidence in, uh, also includes castings. So caterpillar castings, just like this one here in the middle. Uh, this one is about the size of a small rabbit uh, uh, poop, a uh, rabbit pellet. And so they can get pretty big as seen in the, in the picture on the, on the very right there. And then lastly, just a little bit, a bit of trivia. Why do you think? A, a tomato hornworm is called a hornworm. You guessed it. They've got this little protrusion at the end of their uh, body, at the tail end of their body, that looks like a horn. And that's really just to scare away uh, predators. Uh, that horn is actually not rigid, and nor, nor is it very pointy. It's just there for, for show. So uh, that's what the, the, the caterpillar uses to protect itself. So a tomato hornworm is a pest. Next one, lizards. Are lizards pals or pests in the home garden? If you said pals, you're correct. So lizards also help, uh, help to control insect populations. And so they are known for eating um, maggots, they'll eat uh, flying insects, they'll eat uh, worms, they'll, they'll eat anything that they, find, they can find in the garden that, that um, gives them nutrition along the lines of you know, being an insect or some type of larval form of an insect. And so I find them a lot in our near my compost bins and, um, and also in, our, in, my, in my actual garden itself. The left uh, lizard there that you see that's in the bucket was one that I found in the house. Somehow it got into the house and it's an alligator lizard. And uh, the one on the right is a Western fence lizard that we found in my son's school garden. 
So lizards are pals. All right, fig beetle. Fig beetles are pests. So you'll see on the left there, on the upper left, you'll see the fig beetle is that iridescent green beetle. And typically in the summertime, you'll see them buzzing around, going from fruit tree to fruit tree, eating fruits. So uh, typically they, you do find them on, on fig trees, eating figs, but you also find them on other fruits. Um, and uh, the, uh, the uh, larval stage of the fig beetle are, are what you see there in the middle and on the right. So those are those white grubs are fig beetle larvae, and they're they're actually good decomposers. So you'll find them a lot in uh, in mulch as well as compost bins. And the ones in the middle, um, and the ones actually, and the ones on the right as well, we found at my school, my son's school garden, right under the the mulch that we laid down um, to cover their garden beds for for the the fall and winter garden. So they're plentiful in the in the in the uh, garden beds right now. So fig beetle pests, but the, the, the larvae, the larvae and the grubs themselves, grubs themselves, they are actually um, beneficial. All right, next critter, spiders, pal or pest. So they're the creepier of the creepy crawlies. And you're probably, uh, you're probably wanting to call it a pest, but I would say they are pals. So they also help to control the insect population. Um, they do, you know, they do crawl around. They do you look pretty threatening. But generally, uh, if, if you leave them alone, they'll leave you alone. Uh, the spider on the left is a funnel web spider. So you'll see that little funnel web that's been created by the spider. And once a little uh, insect lands on it, it comes out, grabs it, runs back in its, in its funnel, and it consumes the, the, the insect there. The middle one is an orb weaver spider. And as you can see, that circular uh, shaped web, it spins that web and uh, in, so that it catches unsuspecting flying insects. So as you move to the right of that orb weaver spider, you'll see that it's caught. It looks like it might be a yellow jacket there. And then finally, on the far right, this is a very common um, and uh, well-known spider. It's the black widow spider. So you can see the large abdomen. And on the bottom of it, you see that telltale sign of the black widow, which is that red hourglass shape there. So, but in general, spiders are pals. Okay, skunks. Are they a garden pal or a pest? Skunks, I would consider pests in general. Uh, they do tend to keep to themselves, so much like the black widow, you, you leave it alone, it'll leave you, it'll leave you alone. But when it comes to the home garden, they can be pretty destructive. So, do you remember the fig beetle larvae, that big white, uh, that big white grub that we saw earlier? Well, that's one of the favorite foods of the skunk. And so what they'll do is around this time of year, they'll go around digging up uh, mulches and they'll, they'll end up digging up lawns in search of these, these, uh, these larvae. And what happens is that you get something like this. So you'll see, this is one of the garden beds at my son's school garden. You'll see that at one point in time, we had, put down, we had put down a layer of mulch, which you'll see generally looks, looked pretty smooth and uniform, what you'll see on the left-hand side. And then compare that to the right-hand side where a skunk or skunks visited it and most likely went digging for grubs and tore it up. So everything that we had planted in there, little seedlings that were coming up, little onion bulbs, garlic bulbs, they've either been damaged or been uprooted. So we'll either need to replant that or we'll have to Oh, we'll have to find something else to uh, to seed there or to plant there uh, at some point in time. So in this case, it's it's caused us a little bit of rework, uh, and it's caused us some extra time to get this done. So at this point, we uh, I would consider skunks a pest. All right. Last but not least, squirrels. Are squirrels pals or pests? They're cuddly. As cuddly as they look and as cute as they are, I would consider them pests in the home garden. Uh, the, the squirrel on the left there is an Eastern Fox squirrel and the squirrel, squirrel on the right is a ground squirrel. So the Eastern Fox squirrel gen, you generally see hopping um, back and forth among branches and trees here in Southern California, climbing, uh, uh, climbing electrical wires and telephone poles. Whereas the ground squirrel live in little burrows underground. You typically see them closer to the ground rather than uh, in trees. 
and they're pests because they come and they dig up our, our gardens, they eat our seeds, they, um, they, they eat the seedlings that we plant, and, that, and then they sometimes at times will um, eat some of the crops that we grow. So because they're causing damage, they're causing harm to some of our plants, we consider them pests. Still cute as heck, but we still, well, they're, they're, for a home gardener, they'd be considered a pest. All right, so how did you do? I know some of those were kind of tricky. Um, and before we wrap up, I wanna assure you that while managing pests can be frustrating, oftentimes time consuming, just know it's all part of the gar gardening experience. There are ways to manage pests without immediately resorting to spraying uh, like insectic insecticides or putting out rodenticide. Um, and, um, and what I'll do is I'll share additional uh, pest management resources with you shortly. So let's go ahead and just uh, do a quick summary and recap of what we just learned. So remember, some critters can be pals and pests, depending on the person's situation. But in general, for the critters, for the critters that we saw today from the garden, um, I, I would characterize them um, as such. So our, our pals, the, the garden friends, we'll call them, uh, were the, the worms, the earthworms, and the redworms, the hummingbirds, ladybugs, lizards, and spiders. And then the pests, the garden, uh, the, gar the, the garden critters that we consider pests are the ants and aphids, uh, fig, fig beetles, skunks, squirrels, and tomato hornworm. So before I let you go, um, I wanted to just uh, leave with you uh, some information on some uh, useful resources, and just in case you need help with pests of your own in your home, your, in your home garden. So you can contact uh, us at the San Bernardino, San Bernardino County Master Gardener Helpline at 909-387-2182, uh, or you can email us at the email address here provided. And email is actually preferred because oftentimes our uh, master gardeners who staff the, the helpline and the email uh, inbox, uh, they like to ask for pictures of what you're having problems with so that it's easier for us to visualize and research on your behalf. So, so email oftentimes is the preferred uh, method of, of contacting us. Uh, secondly, you could visit our website for information on workshops, uh, free workshops, and most of them are on, online these days, and, and additional gardening resources. And then lastly, as I mentioned earlier, uh, for more information on uh, integrated pest management, you can visit this website. It's extremely comprehensive. It provides you uh, with uh, resources and information and on, on how to manage specific pests. So I encourage you to, to visit that if you're having issues with pests in the garden. And with that, I just wanted to say thank you again. Thank you so much for taking the time to view our presentation. We really appreciate you spending the time with, with us here, with me here, uh, going through our, our garden critters and uh, characterizing them and, and labeling them. I, I hope you learned a lot and I hope you had fun and enjoyed yourselves. And I want to leave you and with, a, with just a I, ha I hope everyone has a extremely safe and uh, happy Halloween, and we hope to see you again soon.